Hi, I'm Christina. I'm Maya from, from Bookworm Book Dreams, and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to talk about all the books that we read in November. So how many books did you read, Christina? So I read uh, nine books. I read two romances, a nonfiction. I read four fantasies and uh, uh, what do I have? Two horrors. Okay, I read eight books. Uh, five of them are paranormal romance. One is a creature horror book and uh, two are fantasy books. Oh, nice. Mia. Yeah. So I'm going to start us off with romance. Uh, I read two romance books. The first one is Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. So this is the story. <laughs> it's fine. My tablet stopped showing me what the story is about. So this is the story of a wedding planner that, get, that gets dumped on her wedding day via her fiance's brother. And I think like a couple of years later, she gets stuck working with that brother on a project uh, to kind of revamp a very famous hotel. I forgot the city it doesn't matter. that it's in. But anyways, to revamp it for weddings and to be like the wedding coordinator for that hotel. And it was cute. It was fun. I flew through it, I think maybe in a day and a half, mm -hmm. but it was very typical. There was nothing new, interesting. Was there drama know? from the brother's side, side that no. the ex-fiancé hooked up with his brother? No, right. no, 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 there was no, there was actually zero drama. Why did he call off the wedding? Is that spoiler? Uh, do I even remember? Okay, okay. <laughs> but no, I, I think he was just a douche and that was it. Okay. Yeah, so, but it was okay, you know, it's a fun read, like, if you want to just pass a bit of time, that's it. And then I read The Boyfriend uh, Project by Fa Farah, I think it's Farah Roshan. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, I had so much trouble reading this book. Okay. So, the story is actually quite, like, a brilliant setup. It's about this... Um, a black girl who is in IT and she's brilliant at it. She is very valued at her job. There's a lot of um, talk about uh, what, how the everything that she does reflects later on to other women of color mm -hmm. that will come uh, looking for the same job or in the same industry that is very male dominated. So the, in that sense, there was like a lot of good topics. And then we have, uh, she's called Samaya. And then we have Daniel, who is a black, I think black Korean. Okay. He's, so he's a, of mixed race. And he is an undercover uh, agent for some kind of financial, uh, yes. For okay, the, so white collar crime division? Let's say, yes. Okay. Yes, some kind of financial, you know, like embezzlement and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's white collar crime. Yeah. And he kind of comes to her, uh, her firm, company. Okay. To for, her company to kind of see who's doing this there and falls for her. Mm -hmm. And for me, he was such... I don't know. He was just like a very weak character for me. I just didn't like him that much. And I loved Samaya. Samaya was very cool, but like he was just no. Oh. And I, I think I read that book over three weeks. <laughs> it took you three weeks to read it? Yes. It was like, yeah, yeah, I just. I, I would have did. given up at some point. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't want to. Like, because the book promised so much. It was like a brilliant setup, but I don't know. I think the whole his storyline bugged me. It just wasn't. And I think. Uh, at one point, he was very selfish because he knew he is not supposed to get involved. He knew she was developing feelings and he knew that he would be leaving at some point and he still pursued her. It's not mm -hmm. like she pursued him and he was like, no, no, back off. And then he was like, oh, I, but I can't resist your charms. But he was actively pursuing her, although he knew the that, he that it wouldn't around. go anywhere. And I, I, I think that also bugged me to so, such a great extent that I just couldn't. Yes. 
But overall, I think I, I think I like gave it three stars. It was it was okay in the end, mm -hmm. but it just took some time. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, in the beginning of the month, I participated in the Paranormal Romance Readathon. It was hosted by a bunch of people. I do have a TBR and a wrap up for that. And in that readathon, I read The Power of Hades by Elise, uh, Eliza Rain and Rose Wilson. I read uh, The Enforcer Enigma by G.L. Carragher, who I love. Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. Uh, no Rest for the Wicked by uh, Cressley Cole. And uh, Taste of Darkness by Katie Reyes. Um, you can hear all my thoughts on this. It was a fun readathon. It definitely really works for, you know, starting reading at the beginning of the month, but then it affected the reading for the rest of the month because I didn't read all that much for the rest of the month, but, you know, it was a fun readathon. You know? <laughs> Next up, we have uh, two uh, book club book picks. That's a lot. So I'm going to start us off with uh, Merchants of Doubt, uh, how a handful of scientists obscured the truth on issues from tobacco smoke to global warming by Naomi Oreskes and Eric M. Conway. So this is basically a book about a group of scientists that kind of starting from the 60s, 70s up to the almost late 90s. I even, haven't finished the book, so oh, I right, can't sorry. confirm this. And even, and even <laughs> later, uh, set about uh, negating what the scientific consensus in the entire wo world was, and kind of the media gave them a platform to present their opinions, although it was like one or two people versus an entire scientific world scientific community on issues such as tobacco, acid rain, climate change, global warming. There were some rockets in Russia. Yeah, the Cold War thing. Cold War. So like a lot of issues have been downplayed and even governments have downplayed them because of this group of scientists. And this is the book that talks about this. Uh, the overall topic was very interesting, but I found it to be overly scientific and repetitive. Very yes, because they very basic repetitive. they basically did the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But it was very scientific. There's even a lot of like when you come to acid rain, there's also a lot of chemical data that's in there, like how uh, how it um, comes about and everything. So it was very dense mm -hmm. because of that. But overall, it was a very interesting read. I got to like. Uh, 50% I think and, <laughs> and I and participated in the discussion didn't say much but you know I concur with everything that she said <laughs> so uh, yeah. the second book we had for our book club is Piranesi which is hidden underneath a bunch of books that we will show you now so Piranesi by uh, Susanna Clark uh, this is her long-awaited um, second book uh, after her success with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell uh, this is a book which, in which we follow Piranesi who lives in a house with the other and in this house it's a wonderful house it uh, uh, helps its um, inhabitants to survive by giving food and stuff and everything else and as we go along in the story somebody else appears in this house nobody else should come to this house and there's a whole mystery thing and everything uh we will have a separate view of this book uh, i'm just gonna say <laughs> that i enjoyed jonathan strange more because <laughs> bunch more stuff happened. This is not a very plot driven book. This is about characters yes. and, and, you know, going into the mystery of our main character and the people in the house. I mean, it is beautifully written and definitely I, I can see its value. It's liter <laughs> literally literal value, but no. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I gave it five stars. You can check all I of our yes. You, you can check all of our thoughts in the review. Yes. It will be somewhere. Either link at some somewhere point. or it will come in like a day or two, twelve. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, I have Nosferatu by uh, Joe Hill. So I finally oh, cool. thank you. So I finally finished this, <laughs> and Maya also already read it. Yeah, so yeah. we will have like a link to her review also somewhere up above. Uh, so uh, this is a story about, oh my god, what's her name? Victoria. Thank you. About Victoria, who, uh, and we follow her from her childhood uh, up to being an adult and having a child of her own. She kind of, let's say, gets kidnapped. Let's say. Yes, let's say. Let's say gets kidnapped by a person 
with a car that has this these license plates and uh, she is the only person that has ever managed to escape uh, this uh, not this person monster monster creature I mean a person that kind of steals children away and they don't come back and she's the only one who survives and when she's an adult her child gets kidnapped by that same person as revenge to Victoria and basically she goes on a hunt to find her son. Yes. I would, we, we should just yeah. mention before you go on yeah. to what you thought. Uh, she has a sort of talent of fighting things that are lost. Yes. Which kind of gets her into trouble in the first place but then later on kind of yes. helps. Which is, which is one of the fantastical elements to this book. Um, because although it's k kind of horror but it is horror it I is horror. It's, horror. Uh, it's also a christmas story as well it's also a christmas story yes uh and i think the exposition here like before you actually get mm -hmm. to the part where she is hunting him is very long so you might get tired of it if you start i mean i think it's very very long but oh, is that the one the, he ate? Yes, that's the book that he oh, ate. Okay. <laughs> but uh, in the end, it's so worth the story. I loved it. The last chapter kind of broke me. Mm -hmm. Like the last scene, like that, it really broke me. It just wrapped it up so well. I knew that was that was going to be the end, but still, you always have that little bit of hope, and then, you know, it's not there anymore. <laughs> But overall, uh, I mean, I don't know what to say. I love Joe Hill's writing. I just enjoy the way he crafts uh, his plots and how I you enjoy the characters. They're very flawed. Mm -hmm. There are some that yes, you just absolutely I... love, and the bad guys are so bad. Yeah, that's like the, true. Uh, the that's big true. guy who was the helper. Oh my god! <laughs> like that was so creepy. Very cool. Okay, so I'll tell you one thing. I'll just. I will probably, uh, I don't know who's going to edit this, but uh, if Maya is, I'm going to give her a picture, like, all the time that the big guy, the helper, was being described, and every time he popped up, I would have a picture from uh, a Doctor Who episode that scared the living shit out of me. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just that creepy. Like, okay, okay, so, cool. Yeah. Ab absolutely awesome. Okay. So, uh, to go in the same sort of direction. Uh, a creature horror story that I read uh, in November is called Devolution by Max Brooks. Uh, Max Brooks is known for writing uh, World War Z, which is a collection of sort of uh, experiences with the zombie apocalypse. And this book is about uh, an experience of a group of, um, let's just say, city folk that went to live green in the um, sort of mountains of right here in, in, the, in the state of Washington in, in uh, United States of America and at one point uh, the so uh, Rainier is like a dormant volcano and then blew up and they got separated from the entirety of the civilization okay. and since you know this natural disaster happened it sort of pushed forward some creatures it is mentioned in the, in the synopsis so it's basically uh, pushed forward a group of uh, Bigfoot big feet Bigfoot 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 I don't know basically pushed them to their um, little uh, community, you know, because they were hungry. And, you know, oh. it sort of gives that sort of horror element as they're trying to deal with nature. So just imagine a bunch of city folk running out of electricity and, um, you know, yeah. trying to survive. Okay. Uh, but hopeful, but, you know, they had like uh, one of the characters in this community was a woman. So this is a, this is a woman from Mos Mostar the city in uh, Bosnia? Bosnia, yes. So basically she survived the the war Okay. and uh, moved to the state, uh, Canada, states, whatever, and uh, became an artist. And so she, she took the name of the, of the city as her like um, artist name. Oh. And since she was the only one with experience <laughs> of surviving, she was like, she grabbed our main character who is whiny as hell. Uh, she grabbed her and her, you know, no good husband, and she was like, "Okay, let's bring food. Let's do this. Let's." That was fun. It was hilarious because Balkans to the rescue. Yes, <laughs> because I listened to it on audiobook, which I think I would recommend everyone uh, when coming uh, when reading Max Brooks uh, books, just go to audiobook version because he always has a full cast 
Uh, so in this one, Judy Greer, if you know who Judy Greer, if I'll put a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah I know, So I she, know. she voiced the main character. And so it's, you know, she's like, the most of it, I can swear. But she said a swear word in Croatian, I mean, in Bosnian. And then, you know, hearing Judy Greer trying to say it, I'm like, what did she say? <laughs> I'm gonna go back. No. It was it was entertaining read. Um, I did give it three uh, three stars, three point five stars. Uh, it was entertaining read, uh, but I liked the World War Z one better because it was yeah. more. Uh, it was scarier and it, it seemed more like real than than this one. But yeah, I'm glad I read it, so I'm looking forward to anything else that that he would write. Cool. Okay, now on to some short reads that I read. Hmm uh over the the course of november so first i have uh judge d judd judge 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 lee judge d judge d and the limits of the law so this is a short story that i read on tor.com uh you know where they have like yeah, free, yeah, free short short, short stories uh, and this is i think by la vie tidal uh so this is basically a story about a judge in the vampire world okay who kind of goes uh, to a place in italy to adjudicate on a matter that uh happened between uh two uh vampires mm -hmm. and you have like uh some uh, some play on words like uh the setting is castello d'oro that is the golden castle okay which is uh, it's spelled like o-r-o -O, okay but in italian horror you just add an R and an E and it's uh -huh. Castello Dorore. So uh -huh. it's Horror Castle. And like one of the vampires took over the castle and it turned from golden to horror. So that was like, since I know Italian, it was very fun to see this okay, like play cool. on words. And it's basically a story on like uh, how, uh, how the vampire... <laughs> I guess legislation works. <laughs> works. Oh, that's cool. And uh, about this uh, storyline about who killed who, actually. Mm -hmm. And that one is really interesting. But since it has 30 pages, I really can't tell you because that would be like spoiling the entire freaking thing. Okay. So okay. the next thing I read is a short story by a Croatian author. No. And that is Misunderstood Short Horror Story by Jelena Hrvoj. Uh, if you are interested, that is actually available uh on uh, in english on amazon so you can buy it and check it out so this is a really really short story like i read it maybe in like 20 minutes okay like it's really short um uh, and this is a story about the dog so this is a story about human horrors and human monsters so okay. There's no paranormal stuff. It's more like what humans can do to like create horror for each other. And the main character is Anna, who is a painter, and she paints with a certain oh no type of paint. Oh no. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. Okay. And the last thing I read is it's just a bit longer than those two, but that is Isis of Kirby by Vesna Kurilic, 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 I don't know, uh, it would be a blood challenge, I guess, if I translate it literally. So this is a story about a werewolf pack that leaves, uh, lives uh, near Fujine in Gorski, <laughs> in Gorski Kotar, this is like a mountainous area in Croatia, and uh, the story is set during the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire, so late 1800s, early 1900s, when the first rail or railroad is being constructed mm -hmm. near Fujine. So we have this werewolf pack uh, that is kind of trying to survive this ra rail or well, railroad, can't say that, uh, because it goes uh, directly across their kind of territory and they're losing space, you know, mm -hmm. kind of humans are invading their territory and they're trying to survive this and the story begins with an, ex an explosion mm -hmm. of the rail tracks and a human running from wolves and a woman saving him. And, okay. And that's all I'm going to say. The book was really interesting. I actually really, really liked it. I was surprised. I read it in one sitting. Mm -hmm. I read it like today, like, like literally today when we're filming this. And it was really interesting. It was more, uh, it was... Quarry, 
but also fantasy. Okay. I mean, it had some cre- creepy elements. All right. Like from a human perspective. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mostly it was fantasy with some romance put in there. Kind of reminded me a bit of urban fantasy, you okay, know, like okay. with the romance part. Uh, and those scenes. <laughs> those scenes all right uh but overall it's more about the dynamics in this pack and how um how um how they listen to the leader and or don't listen and just the dynamics of this small pack that has already gone through a tragedy in their ranks so they're kind of dealing with a lot there's also lgbtq rap which i just didn't expect and it was just there and it was very i mean was it like on the nose or was it subtle no it was it was really nice it was really nice it was really like i was actually very uh surprised by how normal everybody accepted it because it's the late 1900s or late 1800s early 1900s and they were like that's just fine. Okay. And it was like a really, really good story. I really liked it. Awesome. Uh, the last book I read in uh, November was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. If you watched our, <laughs> our TBR video for this month, you, so you saw I had a specific reason for reading this. And uh, list- I listened to it on audio because it was read by Andy Serkis, who played Gollum in all the movies and everything. And it was absolutely amazing. First really? of all, he can do Gandalf, like Ian McKellen is standing there reading the book. It was really? awesome. There's lots of singing. There's lots of songs. Like I did, I don't remember being there being so many songs in The Hobbit, but there are so many songs. He sang them. He really? sounds like Lee Pace when he was, uh, what's the, Legolas' dad's name? I forgot what his name is. The, the big high elf from, from um, not Rivendell, but the other one. Anyway, it was it was a good experience with the audiobook, but did not get all my like Thorin Bilbo romance feels because Thorin is such an asshole in this book. <laughs> like in the movie, they kind of listened a little bit, but here he's kind of an asshole. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's a classic the Hobbit. We follow Bilbo Baggins and a band of dwarves as they go to uh, the Misty Mountain to uh, remove a dragon. That's sort of placed there. Who also, by the way, kind of sounds a bit like Smile from the movies because Andy Serkis is amazing. Uh, I just really want Andy to read all the other Lord of the Rings books so I can, you know, <laughs> listen, to, listen them. to them as well and reread this uh, story. Um, but yeah, I read it. I liked it. Audiobook is also. Awesome. <laughs> I'm finishing up this wrap up with a book by Ilona Andrews. And that is... I can't believe, first of all, I can't believe you read an Ilona Andrews book before I did. <laughs> that what? was like, when you were like, I'm reading it, I'm like, I really? Okay. Because <laughs> I was like, I was content on ignoring it till like Aww. at some point we started again. Because the, fir- the the previous book kind of lessened the whole, the, the, yeah. the, the anticipation and everything It was a bit, uh, was me, a bit so. YA. Yeah. Is this a bit YA, the second one? It's better than the okay. first one. So we're talking about Emerald Blaze, which is the fifth book in the Hidden Legacy series and the second book in the Cater- Catalina, Catalina Baylor trilogy. So if you don't know this, uh, this entire series, like the Hidden Legacy one, follows the Baylor family who live in Seattle? No? Hmm? I have no idea. Anyways, they live in an American town, which is kind of... uh, In a world where sort of magic reigns. Yes, thank you. You have like uh, magic turns on and off. You have... um, (laughs) Hello. Brought this monster to keep us company. Hello. Hello. You're wet. You're wet. Why are you wet? Um, so where magic reigns and you have a lot of uh, different magic users which kind of form houses and then you uh, follow the Baylor family who are investigators and each book has like a different crime or like some intrigue that needs to be solved and in this book this is the second Catalina book so we are following Catalina uh, roughly I think six months to a year after the previous book um, and things get a bit a, a bit a bit heated and a bit more serious uh, she is in a much more important uh, and valuable position than she was before okay like she's not head of the house is she 
She is the head. She was she head of the house in the first one? Yes, she was. Oh my god, I have to reread it. All right, okay. <laughs> uh, but overall, like in the um, state, the country politics of it, oh, she has a, a bigger... bit of a bigger role, uh, and uh, just the entire thing, uh, the the way the world developed was like the best thing okay. ever. And this for me, I'm because, intrigued now because because it just it it added new elements to the wor world that I wasn't expecting and just uh, it also showed a bit more how magic how they can develop their magic to mm -hmm. become stronger and stuff like that so I really found that uh, very interesting the romance part was a bit lacking again that part same of the first one yeah it was again a bit that part was a bit why that part was but it wasn't actually that big of a part okay because uh, basically Catalina is kind of uh, saying no most of the book like fuck off move away from me I don't want to be with you so that kind of makes no sense considering what happened in the first one uh, okay okay I'll read it I'll read it then we'll talk about it, <laughs> it Something happened. I can't tell you what. All right, all right. Anyways, Excellent. but it was very. Uh, she was like at the same time she was negating like every like everything he was trying to, like to, to get her, and but at the same time she was like, oh look, but he's so gorgeous and I still love him. So young people. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like like it was cringy, but there was like this really really hot moment where he was like. Uh, tending to her wounds uh -huh. and that was like really hot that was okay. like, that was, like okay. a really hot moment uh, and there wasn't like the why why anus wasn't there it was more like a nevada thing which was much better yeah. uh so yeah overall i think I, I liked it more than i liked the first one so okay. definitely okay. uh and uh like Il like ilona andrews and their cliffhangers i just i i i, I really <laughs> i really don't know what to say like every freaking book i read like the ending is just okay why don't i have the next one right now because i really need to know what happens now and that's it so that's it for our uh, november wrap-up thank you so much for watching all the important links will be linked down below in the description box here's a dog like share subscribe Bye. Did you say comment down below oh, if you I, have I, any? I mean, I, I'm, yeah. Comment down below if you have any thoughts. Have you read any of these books? Uh, please talk to us again down below. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.